Hey everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review, and it's Wednesday, the 13th of December. My name is Russell Shaw, I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXM. My email address, rshaw at fxm.com. Just going to go ahead and bring up our disclaimers. We'll start off with a high risk investment warning. Right, I've just changed uh, to the microphone in front of me. Can you just let me know if you can hear me? Just want to make sure everything's working. Hey, Kim, good morning to you. Welcome. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up our market commentaries disclaimer. Hi, James. Good morning to you. Good morning, Raj. Hello, David. It's a pleasure to have you on the webinar. Just going to keep the market commentaries on for a few seconds longer. All right, and our references: Market Scope 2.0 and TradingView and TradingView.com. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, let's go through to uh, TradingView. I've got the real rate here, and uh, I just want to do some analysis on the real rate. Um, I was I was disappointed with the uh, CPI that was released uh, yesterday. I don't know how you guys felt, um, but it, there was a um, sort of a deceleration in the disinflation, so to speak, and um, I think that is reflected in rates. Um, Especially, actually, the two-year. We're looking at the ten real rate here. If you look at the two-year, we'll take a look at the two-year, which is a good a good um, gauge of uh, Fed policy. Um, you know, it really jumped yesterday. And what we looked at yesterday was the prospects of a the prospects of a um, reference candle reversal. Here, there was a, the prospects of a reference candle reversal. Um, and we really needed it to close below the reference candles low. Lo and behold, it didn't do that. As soon as the CPR number was released, it actually moved up. So we don't have the reference candle reversal here. Okay, so where's the last reference candle reversal? It's actually to the outside. It's, it's over here. Let's just put in an up arrow. It's over here. Okay, so we sort of got the bias to the upside. Um, what we can do now is we can move this line in the sand down here and see if we can close below uh, yesterday's low. And we're going to have the FOMC uh, out. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Uh, ZA, I believe, 7 p.m. UK. Let me just double check that. I believe I'm right there, but I don't want to misinform. Yeah, 9 p.m. ZA, 7 p.m. UK, and then half hour later we'll get the uh, the press conference. Let me just show you the two year the two year here. We we'll just go, which is uh, a shorter term uh, bond. Uh, the Fed tends to be uh, more active on the front end of the curve. Uh, this is yesterday's. Let's do let's do reference candle. Let's do reference candle analysis on the two-year, just as um, an idea of what potentially the Fed or the market's expecting the Fed to say, or my interpretation of what the market is telling us. So here is the reference candle, right? The line in the sand, and then it's to the upside. Where was the um, the contra? So the contra would have been here. But then, of course, after the CPR release, um, we didn't the the contra confirm. So, um, what I think is going to happen tonight is that um, I think the uh, the Fed and uh, Jerome Powell in his press conference is going to say that progress has been made, and we'll take a look at inflation now. And I think progress has been made, 
But because we've kind of reached the sticky spot, this deceleration in in disinflation, plus we got a, a job market that beat estimates, it's still it was still the job market's still showing moderation, but still beating expectations. Uh, I think there's going to be that higher for longer time uh, type of narrative that comes through. And if we get that higher for longer narrative, it's going to affect the markets. It depends on the tone. We want to just train our minds to try and recognize the tonality of the statement and of the press conference. And if it's a hawkish tone, you know, that's going to support dollar. And there could be could be a tilt towards the um, the hawks. We also watch the dot plots. Okay, that, that's the individual members' projections. So we want to see if the higher for longer theme is pervasive there. We'll just see if there's any comments that are coming through. No, we're all good. All right. Um, let's just go back to the uh, real rate. It's just my uh, preference for monitoring the um, the yields. Um, so we just so uh, real rate is US 10 year minus break even. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do now is uh, bring in the US dollar underneath that. Just want to show you what the US dollar was doing, and then we'll take a look at in inflation. Okay. So uh, let's just go through bringing the US dollar underneath. And um, there was, a, there was a, a line in the sand yesterday as well. When I say a line in the sand, I'm really talking about meeting the third condition of the reference. We didn't get it. We didn't get it. In, so we've got the this um, we've got this buyer's tail, this demand tail on yesterday's candlestick. So dollar. Uh, unfortunately, just not in the morning. It looked like we were getting uh, uh, the push down. That is what I would have preferred. Lo and behold, CPI comes in, and you can just see what a uh, difference it's made. I want to show you the um, headline CPI number. We'll take a look at the core number. Uh, one more comment, just by the way. The truth is that the Fed doesn't use CPI. In as their inflation measurement, it uses PCE. Just uh, so they, nevertheless, I don't think you can completely discount what CPI is saying. Um, let's just go through um, here. Let's type in uh, United States inflation. Okay, this will give us the CPI. So we can look at either the core or the headline. Um, let's take a look at headline. All right, now look here. That's what I want to show you guys. We have a, let me use this arrow here. We have a very steep movement last month. I think that was welcome. And then what we have is a much flatter, let me try that again, a much flatter movement for for yesterday's print, there's a deceleration. See that? There's a deceleration. We can add in the rate of change, just as a as an indicator. And you can just see the tick up. There's a little bit of it. Just grabbing the the wrong line study. I want this one. Yeah. Yes, there's a tick up. In the rate of change, yes, we are below zero. Importantly, we're below zero. That's why we are making progress. But it's now we've got this the stickiness that's that's come in, and I think that the uh, um, dot plots come in for higher for longer, um, and I think that makes a world of difference in terms of the way that we uh, look at the market. Uh, let's go through to the dollar. Uh, we'll do a top down. Okay, we'll carry on with the top down analysis. The the daily chart has changed up since yesterday's webinar. Um, but we'll start with the we'll start with the weekly. Now we've got to look where we are relative to the 30-week moving average. I've just um, 
said before that this 30 week moving average acting as a resistance level uh, and we want to combine that analysis with the um with the rsi and what we can do here is put in a trend line okay and we can see if we break above 50 and a break above this trend line uh, then the dollar all of a sudden um, has some legs but we're not we're not there yet I haven't actually drawn this in particularly well, I don't think. Let me just try. It's a little flatter. Yeah, yeah, that's better. All right. Uh, nevertheless, we are below 50. We are below that 30 week. But when we go to the daily chart, it's not a comfortable position. The, the current position's uncomfortable. Why is it uncomfortable? Because we're in zone two. Okay, zone two. Look what's happened in zone two. We've just moved sideways. It's very difficult to trade sideways markets you've got to be um, exceptionally precise and, and and timing at that type of level is uh, almost impossible right the um the sort of movement in zone three or zone one that that's easier to trade um yesterday uh so just taking out yesterday's candle we saw that we were heading towards zone three and all of a sudden CPI comes out and we get the, the bullish tail. Take a look at what happened to the RSI. So the RSI, we're using actually as a secondary signal with, with trend lines. We're not using it as a primary signal, but um, it looked as if there was going to be a cross below this trend line on the RSI. In other words, um, an indication of acceleration to the downside. And then it hinged completely and now it's, it's basically on this on this trend line. Um, so a change up here where the dollar looked like it was moderating. It now looks like it's got some support. And uh, what we're going to do is we've got to watch if we get into zone one. And the real catalyst, the real catalyst is going to be this FOMC meeting tonight. Very, very uh, important data point. The market's going to be volatile if you're holding positions. Be very, very careful. Okay. Now, what's subsequently happened is that we've lost our trend. Okay. In zone two, we've lost our trend. We had a really nice trend of lower peaks versus lower troughs, and now we are in in zone two. Very uncomfortable. Uh, uh, Kim's saying, with all these uh, news items coming out, forex trading is a big gamble. Um, so it's it's high risk. There's no doubt about that, uh, Kim. And where it becomes really difficult is when we are at uh, transitions or potential transitions. What I mean by that, I'm just going to bring up Microsoft Paint, and um, just want to show you. Uh, sorry, that's not the right. Okay, I'm just bringing up Microsoft Paint. Bear with me a moment. Now, uh, what tends to happen is uh, there tends to be uh, cycles between up markets and down markets, okay? And we know that the up markets and the down markets don't move in straight lines, they tend to zig and zag. And um, let's do an up market. So an up market progresses as follows, right? And this looks pretty comfortable. We're getting impulses up, we're getting, uh, corrections down and we're getting impulses up now uh, if we get something like this we would be well within our rights to assume that uh, we should be looking for the dip okay in other words uh, in other words the primary trend here is up and the dip in the uptrend is would be something uh, that I would be looking for here. But what happens if we're going through a transition period? If we're going through a transition period from an uptrend to a downtrend, then the next, the way the market actually develops is like that. We get a lower peak, then we get a lower trough, and now we've got a change of trend. So um, this area over here is very difficult to trade. Let's maybe move it there because uh, we've actually lost trend. Um, 
so transition periods in all markets are going to be extremely difficult to trade and by the way this is a head and shoulders it's an this one's an ascending head and shoulder left shoulder head right shoulder okay so um i don't know if we're going through some sort of transition transition now but and, and we use the zone analysis to try and get some sort of map right so if we go into zone one uh that's bullish okay and if we get above the 30-week moving average and the RSI pops above 50, then we get a um, strength on the weekly chart. Well, that's a whole different ball game to what we've been looking at recently, and we've got to adjust. And we've got to adjust and be um, try not to resist the fact that there's been some sort of transition. Um, so, I, but I don't know that we are in a transition because we're in no man's land. We're in zone two. So the fact that we're in zone two. Uh, is going to make things a lot more difficult. Let me just see here. Could this be a buy the rumor, sell the fact later today? Mm, I, I mean, it could be. I, I don't think that. Um, I don't see it quite that way. Um, give me a little bit more information, Raj. Um, but. Uh, the idea here is um, just be very careful. We're in zone two. Let's go through, say, take a look at Euro. Uh, sorry, I clicked on gold there. Just want to go through to Euro. Sorry, bear with me. Uh, Euro is just taking a bit longer to download. Mm, just what's coming up. Let's just uh, let's just just go ahead and put it on. Uh... Okay, I'll just bring it up here instead of waiting for the. Okay, so yesterday we actually had some strength coming through on the euro, and then it got sold down after the inflation number, right? After that inflation number. And um, uh, if we just take a look at this on a uh, daily chart, you can see that uh, there's a big selling tail there. And uh, let's go through down to the, to the um, one hour. Uh, no, let's stay on the daily. I beg your pardon. I'm going to put Bollin Jans on you. And I'll just adjust the Bollingers so that we've got our zones. Okay, just one more adjustment here. Uh, this one I'm going to make blue. Okay. Um, so the euro is staying uh, staying in its uh, in its zone three. We've got ECB tomorrow. So we'll see if they come through with some sort of dovish message. Um, what would be interesting is if US dollar pushes into zone one, uh, then I would expect euro to um, show some sort of uh, weakness. Um, all right. Hey, Raj. Okay. See you tomorrow. All right. Um, we're going to stop here. Uh, reason being that I've got the crypto minute next. and. Um, I just want to move from this webinar to that webinar. So I hope that the um, webinar today was just useful, just showing that you know we're in zone two, uh, potential transition. Um, let's see if we can get more direction after FOMC uh, this evening. All right, guys, thanks very much for joining this morning. Uh, please join me for the Crypto Minute. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Thanks very much, guys.